So three, two, one. Okay. Actually, three. you have to give them ten seconds. Uh. So, so uh, without further ado, let's get it started properly. So tonight is our first Wow Park show. Yay! So why not do this? This is a monthly show that we run so that we can share and we learn like investing knowledge together. So, and of course, in the end of the day, as a value investor, yes. as a, a bottom-up investor, as an investor itself, uh, or I investor investing in equities, uh, we like to know how's the market development and how does it, would, uh, how does it affect our investment in the end of the day. Yeah. So this is the, the objective of the show itself. Mm. So tonight, we'll be going through a very, very highly anticipated event which yes. happened last week. Yes. So this is the event which is... Huh? Do you need them to guess first? You want to guess? Uh? So actually, I discussed so, in the list. So probably for those viewers who are on, on live with us right mm. now, just uh, drop in the comments below uh, of what you think we will be sharing. So i just give you guys three seconds to just put, in, uh, put your answers in the comments below. Yeah. So three, two, one. Okay. Actually, and you have to give them 10 seconds. Uh. So 10 there's second. a 10 second lag. So, oh, okay. so we give another seven seconds. Uh. Okay. Six, five, five four, four Three, two, two one. one. Okay, All right. let's unveil it. So this is the event. Berkshire Hathaway AGM. Yeah. Okay, so this is the AGM where uh, you can see both of the Oracle of Omaha, which is Warren Buffett and, and Charlie Munger. So both of them is in the AGM sharing their investing knowledge, their view on the market, their, all their intelligence that have been accumulated for the past 50, 60 years. Mm. So this is one of the events that all the investors, regardless you're investing in your own country, international securities, even bond market, bankers, whoever who invests or people who don't invest as well will watch and follow, mm. all right? So today, our purpose is to share what we learned inside the event. Yep. So before we go into what we'll be sharing, uh, a disclaimer. Yes. Very important disclaimer. Yes. So later on, we'll be sharing with you a lot of company being mentioned in Berkshire Hathaway AGM itself. Mm. Okay. So all the things that we shared, especially the companies that we shared, is purely educational purpose. It's purely what purpose? Educational purposes. Yeah. So of course, la, when we mention about companies, we'll go into the company in depth using well part. Yeah. So if you can have your well part ready, uh, for example, you can have your laptop. Uh, to play the, the Facebook Live and use your handphone to access World Park, it will be help uh, your learning tonight a lot. Yes. It will be help your learning a lot, uh, tonight a lot yes. because we will be going in depth by the numbers by the numbers that we have inside World Park. All right. Mm. So of course tonight I'll be not sharing alone. I've invited one of our World Park heavy user, uh, my good friends. Uh, he is an investor that invest almost a decade. Yeah, near, ten, near, almost ten years. Almost ten years, ten and years. Um, previously he asked asked me la, So what what I know about him? So I give him three words about him. <laughs> so he's a systemizer, automizer, and digitizer. What does it mean? <laughs> Means uh, he's a, he's great in system. He can build system very very well by understanding the whole process. And then the the uh, up level part is he can automize it not just physically and it optimizes it in a way that it turns it digital. Mm. Wow. So this is one of the key things that in the market right now, oh, everyone okay. want to go digital platform, right? Eric's putting a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> so, so no, uh, you can know a person who so systemized mm. and digitizes mm. and that's why explain why he used World Park yep. extensively, right? Yep. <laughs> because all the stuff is so digitized that you can read the numbers mm. in a split second. Yeah, just all right. Much. Thanos snaps his finger. Yeah. So without further ado, let's welcome Ming Ah. Give him a clap. <laughs> so you are in Well Park uh, on the Facebook Live. Please say hi, Ming An. So hi. It's M I N A N. Man. Just say hi, Ming An. Okay. I purposely invite one ah. Uh, it's not free. I treat him dinner. So please say hi, Ming An. Thank you. Hi, so Ming An. Hi, Ming An. Need to do an introduction. Uh, Let's them, let them address first lah. Give oh. them time to okay. say hi Ming-An first. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hi. I'm waiting for hi Ming-An. If, if you don't know uh, Ming-An, so Ming-An uh, has been investing for the past 10 years. Yeah. And then one of the things that uh, that 
all uh, people around us that know Mingan are uh, very very envious about is he used to carry a stack of paper a stack of paper like this thick but this this paper is not books uh. this paper also is not like invoice and bill this stack of paper are dividend checks <laughs> yeah so we all envied about him because he got whole stack of dividend checks that not really carried around like he, he showed us like it's not like you carry around shopping or whatever just that he showed us he got this stack of dividend checks yeah so later you share his knowledge and maybe share a bit about how he collect all the checks okay right. so okay I so i see wow well, there's uh Jia Hao, say hi Ming An and we have Jing, Jing Yuan, Chia, Jess Tang and Edison Tay. Hey, thanks for responding. Yeah. yeah. Ming An, these are people who are saying hi to you. Yeah, so uh, really I uh, want to say a word of thanks because uh, for investing your time uh, to watch this Facebook Live, right? We, uh, Eric and I really want to make sure that we add maximum value to you. And also, uh, you find other areas that you find that you want us to talk in the talk show. I guess Eric will also really love uh, this feedback. So yeah. whatever feedback, just share with us so that we can improve in the next talk show. Maybe you can look, even look for investors in the Wealth Park, uh, Wealth Park community mm. to come and uh, also contribute what they know to you so that you can ac further accelerate your learning. And it, Definitely. everyone will grow as a community. That's the key thing of the yeah. Wealth Park Learn. Yeah, we all prosper together. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, okay, maybe Mingan. Yep. Can you introduce yourself further? Okay. Maybe my introduce is not so complete. Okay, so um, how I started off with uh, value investing was uh, basically I need to uh, acknowledge my dad because he's a role model of uh, letting me know what I ought not to do in investing. So. Oh, it's a negative example, what do you mean? Uh, no, he is a, <laughs> he's a good example of what I wanted to do because I couldn't visualize myself of uh, sitting in front of a computer uh, looking at the charts so uh, there was one time he wanted to teach me but then i could not uh, i could not uh, learn it accept or perhaps i couldn't digest the fact so i know i needed to look at something else that's when uh, i met the whole team ken clive uh, got into the world of value investing and right now what i'm doing right now is that i'm just building a retirement uh, income portfolio for my parents so each time the REITs give yeah, out dividends, REITs. which uh, I think has been, is it live? In, it is live. It is live, right? Yeah, so you, if you have not accessed all, all the features inside, uh, yes. one of the features that have been updated recently is REITs. So uh, I think some of the uh, investors that use Wealth Park, yeah. they have discovered the changes inside REITs financial statement. Yes. We silently update, but I uh, haven't let you all know, which is yes. we haven't announced yet. But those who really check on REITs, you have seen there's changes in that financial statement. Yeah. So um, I use right now I use Wealth Park to kind of make sure that my REITs is all uh, all in good health, right? And all the dividends that um, either I receive quarterly or half yearly, depending on the REIT that you buy, um, I just pass it to my parents. So right now, sometimes my mom, I think the last check, my mom passed it back to me and say, uh, Mingan, why not you take this money and you just reinvest? So um, wow. just want to let the Wealth Park community members know that you are on the right track. Wow, wouldn't you want to be like Ming An? Yes. Give money like a check. Hey, mom, hey, your, your, do what I want to do. Yeah. And then your mom don't want to take it. <laughs> and then give it back to you. Yeah. Which so is what he do is what reinvest. We do here, reinvest. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Okay, so, yeah, so Ming An. Once again, welcome and really thank you for yeah. for your time to join thank us you tonight. For me on and, the show. and of course, uh, as uh, I've said earlier, Mingan has been uh, investing for the past one decade. He has uh, read a lot of companies uh, in there, and of course, not not in in a, in a term of like numbers like ten or millions of companies, but in terms of like when he looked in the companies, he look very in depth, mm. understanding the business and mm. how the business grow and stuff like that. Yeah. So tonight. He'll be here, we'll be digging his mind, mm. his investing knowledge, and pass it to you all. But if you'd like to know more, please type any question when, I mean, if he has mentioned some things that you'd like to clarify, just type in into the uh, comment, we will look into it. Mm. Uh, it will help uh, your learning, every other people learning. So, uh, I mean, it's a community that we like to share with each other. Mm. If some things that you are not clear, just type into the comment, yeah. we will look into it. Alright? Yeah. So, Back to tonight's topic. 
Yes. The next topic is Berkshire Hathaway. Hathaway. So Berkshire Hathaway is a company that um, a lot of our investors admire about hmm. because if you not know, Berkshire Hathaway's share price is having the biggest number. Uh. We are not talking about market cap. In terms of the price itself, yes. Berkshire Hathaway A shares. Do you know what is the price right now? I think 200. 200,000? Yeah. It's a six digit. In short, it's a six digit. Yeah. It's a six digit company. One share, you need six digit of uh, your portfolio to buy yeah. one share. Just one share. Okay. But of course, uh, there's another way to purchase Berkshire Hathaway share, which is... Yes. Class B. Class B. Okay. Mm. If I'm not wrong, uh, Class B share is like 150 mm. times or 1,500 times. Uh, that's part of the voting rights. Yeah. Yeah. Voting rights. So if you do attend the AGM, you can cast your vote. So... Yeah. Yeah. So you can uh, buy like around two hundred two hundred dollars, like yeah, two hundred dollars right per share. So um, I also just to put a disclaimer, I mm. I am a Berkshire Hathaway shareholder. So one of the things that oh uh, no, it's Class B, okay, it's Class B, <laughs> <laughs> it's Class B, <laughs> Class B, okay. So I Class B also can like amount of a like, Class A share, yeah. Yeah. So um, bought it in two one two. So recently the one of the brokerage firms sent me send me the account statement. So I was like, oh, I bought it at 150 USD. Right now it's at 210. It's like, I practically bought the share, left it on the shelf. Today, it's at 210. Basically doing nothing. Yeah, so that's why, that's the power of value investing also. Wow. If you invest your funds into the right uh, businesses and you need to use Wealthpunk to help you do that because that's the whole intention of us, the whole team. Creating yeah. wealth fund yeah. to support your investment journey. Exactly. So later on, we will be going in depth further into the numbers. Mm. So not to worry. I know uh, some of the questions like, is it good time to buy? How to buy? When when can we buy? Mm. Yeah, I know all the questions. So hold on the question. If you, I mean, if you do have the question, please do type it in the comment. We will mm. definitely ans- answer it. Uh, like uh, like after we introduce about the company. Yeah. So maybe go uh, a bit about history of Berkshire Hathaway. Yeah. So Berkshire Hathaway is a company that are uh, run by Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger right now. So do you know that Berkshire Hathaway, like previously, uh, before he come into today's stage, do you know that it is a textile company? Yes. <laughs> textile but, company. But, yeah. You mean textile like this? Yeah. It's a textile company that uh, they, they, pro- they manufacture uh, clothes and stuff like that. So they have nothing to do with investment back then. Mm. And this gentleman, by the name of Warren Buffett, yeah. buy this company. Yeah. And then today, mm. they are nothing about textile. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Minghan, what happened actually? And why why Buffett buy this company and something like turn it around? And then why he keep the Berkshire Hathaway? I think the uh, key thing of, uh, if I remember correctly, is that he wanted to use this name to remind him about how, I think it's to remind him of the principles of uh, investing. Uh-huh. So in fact, when he bought this uh, brochure out of the way as a textile company, right, he thought that yeah, it was kind of a good company. But after that, I think looking just pure, based on pure numbers. Mm-hmm. So after that, uh, in fact, I also do have my own learning experience when I purely look at pure numbers. So that's why at, at the end, how he decided that he wanted to keep this name is just to let him know that, okay, can make sure that he needs to look in more more details like the business model, uh-huh. <clears throat> the management, and the web before deciding whether is it a, is it a good buy. Nah? Oh, okay. So, uh, like in short, it's like he buy uh, as an investment initially. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Uh, does he really want to like involve in management back then? Like right now, he doesn't really management, right? Yeah, he doesn't do. So currently, if you, uh, if you have keep yourself abreast of uh, what I do, do is that I keep around myself abreast of uh, Berkshire Hathaway purely based on the few key few key business divisions. Mm. Definitely primary the one thing I always remember of Berkshire Hathaway is that <clears throat> it's a conglomerate. Yeah, buying conglomerate. Up, yes. Buying up uh, good businesses uh, and they always do this by using the insurance division. I uh, think it's Gecko. Ge- yes, Gecko. Gecko, right? Yeah. yeah they, they call it uh, insurance flop. La. Yeah. So in fact, if you yeah. go to Singapore, I'm not sure it, they they have one. Uh, I think a specialty insurance. Uh, I'm not sure if the office is still at uh, 
Robinson near just opposite Capital Capital Land Tower. Oh, you so, mean the Berkshire Hathaway Insurance Arm? Yes, there's oh. one. There's one under right. I think there's an insurance arm or office location down there. So one day I was just walking past. I just saw it. Berkshire Hathaway Specialty Insurance. So I was like, oh, interesting. Right. Uh, never knew that Berkshire Hathaway has like set its foot into the Singapore uh, office landscape. Wow. Okay. So like previously as a textile company, mm. he bought it just by purely knocking numbers, yeah. which is um, ended up like not investing in a good company yeah. per se, but number is good. Yeah. Uh, and eventually he made other investment yeah. and expand a business. Mm-hmm. So one of the way he expand a business is using an uh, insurance company. So he buy into Gecko insurance company, yeah. you know, but like, I mean, can you explain further, like how how you use the insurance company money to buy company like other company? Or how okay. does it really work? So, uh, um, in a nutshell, what what you definitely do in the insurance company is always pay pay the premiums upfront for guaranteeing or maybe covering some uh coverages against maybe for example fire insurance. What I do know for Bushra the way is that uh, I remember one there was one year I invest I invested the. My the time that I took the train, reading the each page of the annual report, and there was one mm. thing about the insurance arm is that, I think it does the I think the lucrative part, no maybe in fact I think the the best part about the insurance arm is that they do the property, uh, reinsurance, meaning mm. that, um, they they write out the insurance then they get another insurer to come and insure, so this and the key thing about this property insurance is that. I think it goes and ensures those homes that aren't really affected much by natural disasters in America. Uh, okay. Yeah, so um, of course on the su- surface level, of course it seems like a very generic word or property insurance, but I believe the uh, the, the, the team members running those, that, those kind of divisions, right? they definitely have really in-depth knowledge of what are the properties mm. in US that they should insure and what are the things that they feel that hey, there's uh, going to be a quite a high risk of being uh, of maybe perhaps doing a insurance payout. So they definitely avoid those kind of uh, properties in the certain states of uh, America. Oh, okay, okay. So so uh, it means that for like Berkshire Hathaway, mm. in short, their insurance arm, mm. they are very cautious lah. Yes. And they can write uh, so like a showing kind of insurance. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, the probability of the they uh, uh, winning yes. is much higher so yes. that they can have so-called the premium. La. Yes. So it's like, it's like you're buying insurance, you always pay premium, right? In the other day, it, if, you, if you got hit or whatever, you, you can claim. Yes. Uh, if you're not, they can use the premium money mm. to invest. Yes. So that's how your, all your insurance premium that you, you didn't claim, mm. they go and buy other company. Yes. Yeah. So like he, they got like millions and millions of dollars mm. to invest in other company. Yep. So you can see like uh, Berkshire Hathaway, the portfolio, they got a lot of great companies, right? Mm. Mm. So uh, there's also another arm, um, uh, maybe uh, just to share with the viewers here and the community is that uh, something I, because I, in, I think in 2014, I went down with my brother uh, to attend the AGM. So, you know, it's like early morning, 4 a.m. Uh, 4am Yes, people are supposed to still be sleeping And I remember I was uh, stay at Kansas And it was a two and a half hour drive up And just to attend And I reached there at 7 Oh, you mean you, you didn't stay at Omaha You stayed uh, at Kansas, Kansas And then you drive Street. 2 hours to the yeah. AGM location yes. So we just drove through planes uh, Fields of planes and planes and planes But definitely what is interesting is that uh, Because America um, To travel or perhaps to cross from one end to the other end, there's only this kind of uh, common modes of transport. Either you take a airplane, you take a car, or you take the rail. So recently, I think maybe three years ago, there was a I think there was this acquisition on uh, BNSF where it really t- the, oh, where is BNSF, it the railway? Yes, yeah, correct. Yeah. So this railway, uh, I think there's also some nuance, maybe more details into the how they operate the railway. But um, what it when I took a look at the map which was presented because uh, the nice the good thing about the AGM is mm. that wow uh, they put up all the different business divisions it's like a how do you say is it a carnival uh, it's like a carnival yeah. and you go there 
and the representatives from each business divisions will be down there to go and uh, talk, come and describe and talk to you about how is the business doing. So I was looking at this BNSF, the whole map, uh, the whole map of America. Then you can look at the number of rails that BNSF has, mm -hmm. and that's also if you look at it. Um, though I don't re don't really have experience in uh, real real roads, but it's like quite, the coverage is quite kind of extensive. Wow. So that's also, but of course, you know when it is kind of capex intensive also. Mm -hmm. But definitely, definitely, what makes it different for Berkshire Hathaway is that because it buys out a lot of businesses, right? It can generate a lot of operating cash flow. Mm -hmm. So I believe uh, Mr. Warren Buffett would move this cash flow around to different. Uh, to different businesses if there is such a need to do so. Oh, what you mean is other than having insurance arm that have premiums, they also have some other companies yes, they can so, who so called have like cash flow. They use the cash flow to invest. Yes. Wow. Mr. Buffett, very smart. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, really know how to allocate all the monies and create a lot of uh, values to shareholders. I would yes. say. I guess he's one of the um, very brilliant capital locators. Maybe huh. he maybe he makes it quite maybe for himself he makes it quite simple that he just reads some report, makes some business sense and he invests. Well, I think yeah, in a simple term it's that way, but definitely for us if if I were to invest, can we invest like him? Like uh, definitely one day. <laughs> one day. Okay. Look forward to that. Okay. So um so this is basically how how uh Berkshire Hathaway itself it, it sounds more like an investment holding mm. whereby they can really uh channel or not so is channel is not a good word uh mm. how to effectively use the money inside the each divisions to yes. make good investment and make good returns mm. uh for all the investors so yeah. um like we are, like Berkshire is very very huge and uh. Uh, of course, uh, like what we have mentioned just now, yeah. the investment type, investment style for Berkshire Hathaway have changed over time. Yeah. So previously, he looked at like so-called um, numbers is good, mm. and then valuation is cheap, and then buy in the company. But he then found out uh, some of the company is not so good, mm. and then he learned like uh, like investment philosophy like from, I would say uh, what was his name? Philip Fisher. Yeah. Yeah, Philip Fisher. So I think this guy also helped him a lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> Of course, uh, yeah, Charlie also, Munger. Yeah, this guy so he also mentioned that uh, not to just look at a company, just numbers. You mm. have to look at their growth path, whether they can continue to grow, and then uh, so he in the end of the day, uh, he combined all these strategies, and then he have a very famous quote. I would say a very famous quote yeah. is that uh, uh, is is far more better mm. to buy a wonderful company, wonderful company which very good company at fair price mm. than buying an average company at an uh, undervalued price. Yeah. Yeah. So back to the key question of the night. So after analyzing Berkshire Hathaway, you know the business model, you know how they manage all the business. In the end of the day, when do we know is a good time to buy? When's a good time to buy? So before I hit into the valuations, right, I guess there's also one key thing that uh, I took away from the AGM is that, you know, if you look at the whole division of business, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, right? You know, each entity can stand by its own. So there was one time I was wondering when on the airplane trip to Omaha, I'm wondering what is the question that I wanted to ask Mr. Buffett and Mr. Munger that if, if they happen to be watching this video, no matter how, uh, no well, Buffett, you, mean, you know, look at maybe us. this video uh, <laughs> share, has help us viral, share to Warren Buffett. Yeah, viral reach. <laughs> You know, um, the question I always wanted to ask is that how is he able to attract um, many top talented management mm. despite them knowing that they, they themselves as a sole entity, they are able to uh, stand and operate on its own? Because it, it's kind of like obvious that uh, each entity talented enough, they can stand by their own. Mm. But why would they want to choose to say, hey, let's... Uh, go under the arm of Berkshire Hathaway. So that is really uh, some sort of like, I think I will consider it as an intangible mode. And if you really have to ask me, uh, probably maybe for this kind of good management, mm. my, my own take, uh, mm. uh, just a disclaimer, uh, because uh, 
I just want to make sure that I dis- make a disclaimer. <laughs> okay. uh, normally, I give this kind of margin of safety, good management, uh, 20% margin of safety. Mm. Yeah, because at the end, all good businesses are always run by people. Yep. Yeah, of course, you want to get make sure that you get a management that also runs a very good, superb business. Yeah, then there's a very a good company. But coming back to valuation, mm. right? Right. Can say, right? Uh, you can share uh, with your point of view. Okay. Yeah, point of so, view. since Berkshire Hathaway right now is a conglomerate, of course, uh, there are many types of uh, valuation and mm. I normally want to keep it simple. Mm. Um, at the end, it's uh, the amount of cash flow that a company can generate, mm. right? Because in um, a company can be profitable, but without cash flow, it still can go bust. Yes. Right? So definitely cash flow is the whole essence of making ensuring that the business survives. So for Berkshire Hathaway, my own valuation was more of like just using uh, the operating cash flow divided by the number of shares. So it's operating cash flow divided by um, so so it's your own valuation. Yeah, it's my oh, own yeah. valuation method. Because um sometimes sometimes because they have many business divisions, mm. so of course you can do the all the other math, get the EPS of each business division, add them up. It is fine, but I look at it as one big uh, conglomerate. And then I, I think, well, I mean, maybe share with us the reason of using cash flow. The reason of using cash flow? Yeah. Yes, because, because, basically, because it is an operating business. Okay. It's just that. Yeah. Yeah, so sometimes I, I choose to, after investing for 10 years, uh, some things I keep it simple, but of course, with Ralph Park, mm-hmm. right, there are certain key matrix that we want to make sure that. Uh, in any company that we want to invest, you right. want to make sure that it's healthy. Mm. Right, you need to make sure you see green color for the number of stars and the animal. Stars, yeah. So, um, since Mingan have brought, uh, why not we all switch to Wild Park then? All right. So, if you all are at home, switch to Wild Park mm. and then maybe we go through together. Yeah. And then uh, let the numbers speak itself. Yeah. Uh, we, we don't do the talking, the number do the talking. All right. Yep. So, Okay, so if you are on my part, say, give me a, give us a thumbs up, give us a thumb and say, hey, I, you can see my screen right here. Hmm. Give us a thumb if you can see my screen right here. I need to move the mouse. Okay. To make sure that you can see. All right. So oh. how to go into it? Uh, pretty simple. You just go to your watch list and then you just type Berkshire Hardaway. Hmm. Uh, in fact, you just type Berkshire, you come out. So tonight we go into A shares, okay? Uh, because Berkshire Hardaway A shares. Is so called the the main share, the the primary share. Yeah. The B shares is so called uh to address uh, people who want to buy but uh don't have uh, the the amount of money, yeah. so they break up into small shares for yeah. investor to in- invest. Yeah. But the main shares is uh Berkshire Hathaway A shares. But Eric, before yeah. we move on, uh, right now you just want to make a uh, assumption that mm-hmm. uh you're able to access the New York Stock Exchange. Yes. Yes, because because there could be some viewers that's on uh, the one exchange. True. So uh, is there a possibility for them to upgrade? Yep. Yep. So if you like to like yeah. let's say you are just using like a, a, a country exchange Malaysia Singapore whichever if you like to go for an upgrade just give us a chat just give us a chat mm. and then uh, we will reply you on uh, how to make the upgrade yep. okay you can go to uh, hello at wapato.io means you email us or you go to uh, the Facebook chat itself you just chat with us uh, we will yep. definitely help you how to make an upgrade okay yep. and uh, it's like easy step yeah if you watch that, okay. <laughs> so all right, let us go back yes, to uh, Berkshire yes, Hathaway A shares. Yeah. Okay. So if you uh, search, you can just look for BRK dot A. Yeah. So once you at BRK dot A, you just click on it. So as per usual, if you are first time at this platform, mm-hmm. uh, this is your overview page. Whenever you are in this, mm-hmm. you can just go up and down. Yeah. To look for basic information. Yeah. All right. Um. Actually, this is uh, one of the part that uh, we have updated, but we haven't announced yet. Um, I say it's the development team. Never mind. I'll update today. <laughs> so, if you are first time looking at this, please don't be shocked because I'm very impressed about it. So, it's about the company info. So previously, if you click on company info about, it's basically just description. But right now, let's see what have it be updated. Oh, so okay. when you click on company info, you click more. Oh. Of course, you tell you what the company does. But I, believe, I mean, it's basically conglomerates. Uh, they do a lot of things uh, yeah. from railway to, to like consumer business to jewelry, a lot of things like insurance. Okay, so uh, it's a big company and you can see what they do. Uh. Yeah. 
yep. and uh, they have their company like addresses, website. So here you also can know who are the key management. Yeah, you can see, that's interesting. Yeah, Warren Buffett. Ah, just now, uh, Mingai got said, like, who are the leaders that they attracted yes. in? So there's two key leaders that they always mention, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. And they have been promoted. Is it so called promoted? They've been in the company for a long time, uh, Just uh, they always talk about the succession plan or whatever. Yeah. They, but uh, Mr. Buffett and Charlie Mung always mention these two person names. Which is uh, one Jean of it is Jin Ajit. Who is the other one? Uh? Mm-hmm. Never mind. Uh, Definitely Jin Ajit. Jin Ajit is one of the uh, so called <coughs> the potential uh, successor uh, yeah. of Bashar Hathaway. So here you can see who are the key executives and of course who are the major shareholders of the company. Mm. So uh, we always, uh, <coughs> and there's always a fault list like who are the 50 most. Um, uh, wealthy person or who wealthy are 50 richest investor. person, right? Okay, actually, you can see here, Mr. Buffett owns sixteen percent, sixteen percent of uh PRK Yeah. So right now, I think the market cap is like, is it five hundred billion? Uh, around five hundred billion. So you can just do the math. Lost, then you know like the like they are like you can know but uh Buffett is like his net worth uh, is fifty sixty billion. Uh, so you can just do the math here. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can see a very familiar name here, Bills and Melinda Gates. Yeah. Yep. So you understand why <coughs> uh, Bill Gates sit in the front seat of Berkshire Hathaway Asia. Yeah, yep. because he's one of the big shareholders. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure you take note of this part. Company information will always allow you to find out the share ownership. Mm, okay. Yeah. So without further ado, let us just go to a brief view. Uh. So you always go to like WP rating. Mm. So take note, Berkshire Hathaway is the so-called investment holding company. Mm-hmm. So uh, for investment holding company, it's like a fi- we call it a financial service company. La. Okay. Right now it's still uh, un- so-called unrated. Mm. Uh, our team is working on it. So not to worry, very soon we'll see stars right there. La. So as for current, WP rating is not unrated. But let us look at star chart. So for Berkshire Hathaway, it's a conglomerate. There's yeah. a lot of asset inside. So you can see that uh, Berkshire Hathaway is an uh, elephant. Mm. And uh, if you look at, uh, should I look at Ivy Line first? We should look at cash flow first. Like. Yeah, it's because uh, Mihan always mentioning cash flow. Like. Yeah. So if you look at cash flow, there's two places to look at cash flow. So either you go straight to cash flow statement mm. or you go to key ratios. You scroll to the bottom, you can look at this cash flow. I think this is much more easier to view. Like. Yeah. So you can see that the green color is the ones that Mihan mentioned. Cash flow from operation. Ah. Yeah, so this is the one he always look at. So you can see that over the years, the cash flow from operation has been increasing. Mm. Okay, so it's like uh, it's thirty billion, like forty billion kind of cash flow yeah. generated from Berkshire Hathaway alone. <coughs> forty billion, wow! It's like a fingertip for that. All right, and then you can see that that uh, there's a quite an amount like sixteen in the twen- twelve like in the teens like, teens of billions of capex that they reinvest into business mm. and then in the end there's a free cash flow all right yep. all right uh here uh in terms of like valuation we doesn't have like uh op- like uh ming an so-called uh valuation method whereby he used operating cash flow divided by number of bis- uh, mm. number of shares so here let us go to iv line so iv line right here uh how yep. how we pick up as nav because the company type is elephant yeah so when it's an elephant type of uh, company uh, we'll use NAV as a valuation method. Mm. So called a more conservative kind of valuation method. Yep. But if you have your own thoughts whereby you like to hey, maybe maybe I can use like cash flow. Yeah. So you can go to this discounted cash flow to look at their valuation method. Yeah. So uh it's not to say that if there's a crown you have to follow. Yeah. Alright. In the end of the day, uh you can make your own judgment and assessment of a company. Yep. Because company time to time they will have uh, some changes. Mm. So at a point of time at this point of time uh, it, we assess uh, Berkshire Hathaway as an elephant type of business. All right. Mm. So elephant type, uh, the the most suitable uh, valuation method is NAV la. Okay. Mm. So this is uh, well, let's say if you go to discounted cash flow, uh, they are so called right now it's still overvalued and yep. the increased value is one hundred twenty seven. All right. Mm. But let's say if you look at earnings, it's at uh, so called fat value la. Four mm. percent margin. Okay. Yep. So. This tool is to help you in terms of assessing the, the numbers to do the so-called valuation method mm. quickly. But in the end of the day, uh, you still can make your own judgment. Yep. Yeah. You know, uh, yesterday when I discussed with friend, he said, hey, why why you look at numbers so fast? 
like uh, it's, it's like just why why you just don't you don't focus more on numbers like you just five ten minutes just look at number then then like settle. Mm. Um, uh, you have to understand one thing. Before we have well park, uh, <laughs> I I think we, previously we do attend classes. So yeah. Ming and myself we attend classes, and yeah. when we look at business, uh, actually there's a lot of time that we spend uh, on a software called Microsoft Excel. Yeah. So what we do is basically we get all the annual reports and then we key in the Microsoft Excel and yeah. then get the, the numbers, everything out, get the chart, everything. So right now we have cut down that like almost 90% mm. and we use 10% of our time to uh, look at numbers. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but that doesn't mean you turn lazy. Uh, true, true. Me, me, I mean to, to like shorten uh, the investment process uh, yeah. because in the end of the day, let's say we have used like uh, previously we have like 3-4 hours just to work Excel, that means you have three, four hour lesser to look at other companies. Yeah. Yeah. So the three, four hours that you can save for one company, if you look at 10 company, means 30 and 40 hours safe. Yeah. Look at numbers. Yeah. So this is the amount of time whereby you always advocate. Well, part can help you invest smarter, that's again, faster. faster. Yeah. So this is, uh, so so that's why when he when when we talk when I talk with friends, hey, actually yeah, it, it's not really we don't put a lot of time in it because we have used a smart way with technology mm. to shorten the time, which yep. is faster. Yep. And of course, how to make it smarter is we have all the uh, star chain and stuff like that, like, yep. so we can really understand the company more straightforward. Like oh, this is an elephant type. Yep. This is a gorilla type. So all the time safe, right? We use it to kind of look at the business model. Mm. Okay. So so this is uh on Berkshire Hathaway. Wow. Actually, Berkshire Hathaway is a much more bigger company whereby we, uh, definitely in a half an hour time, I, I don't think it's fair that we use half an hour time to conclude Berkshire Hathaway. Yeah. Because Berkshire Hathaway, not just, I mean, in terms of their, their business operation, uh, like just now you shared, like, how many like, segments are? I think uh, three, the real, uh-huh. the insurance. Uh-huh. I think it's, uh, there are a few more, but smaller ones like Seas Candy, uh, Nebraska furniture, but uh, yeah, yeah. we're talking about yeah later. We we'll talk okay. about Nebraska, yeah. Nebraska, then uh, I think there's also the, I think there's one is also the kitchen kitchenware, kitchenware. Yeah. Okay. But I but <laughs> definitely the it does have a lot of uh different brands under yeah. it. Yeah. So so in short, it's like uh there's four big segment, uh which house a lot of like uh pri- can I, can I call it private company. Because it's housed under Berkshire Hathaway, so, yeah. so it's like private company. Yeah. And they have a portfolio of 50 over public listed company. So yeah. uh, to be fair, uh, like um, if you really, really want to like so-called study in a company, uh, actually you should study in all the companies, yeah. right? To understand the whole business model of Berkshire Hathaway. Yeah. So if you like to look deeper, I think it's a good companies that uh, you would spend time but uh, definitely it's not an easy company because it's, uh, you have to spend quite a substantial amount of time mm. on the business model. But yep. numbers wise, it's all there, all right? Yep. Okay, and uh, if you like to look at their annual report, uh, actually there's another book, right? Uh, which they summarize all the annual report together. What is the book name? Uh? Uh, Shareholders Letter. Is uh, it Lawrence Cunningham, is it? Ah, yeah, 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 Lawrence Cunningham. So Lawrence Cunningham, they, 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 oh, so, yeah, so they what, summarize, yeah. So what he does is he summarize the the uh, sharing inside the annual annual share of the letter yeah. and then make it in a different segment so that you can read it in each so uh, I've I read it before but I can't, can't really remember what he, he summarized inside but basically it's like uh, like management value yep. how you analyze a company so you yep. make it in a segment uh, like across the years you make it a segment so that you can read it easily yeah so that's one of the books that you can read on uh, and yeah. these are yeah, the rest of the books yeah. if you like to know uh, value investing, Berkshire Hathaway, everything about uh, Mr. Buffer, everything about Charlie Munger, these are all the books you can go for. Mm. Alright? So you can save the 3-4 hour, invest in this. Alright? Mm. This is definitely one of the greatest books that you can, can ever read in uh, in your lifetime. Alright? Yeah, so what's things? Okay. Uh, actually, I want to go into uh, the Berkshire Hathaway discussion. Maybe you let me know. Uh, uh, if you like me to share my like so-called my learning, on Bookshire Hathaway Egypt, uh, by right, but I mean, uh, Ming An, he flew all the way to hmm. Omaha to attend Bookshire Hathaway Egypt, and then I think you you spend some money, right? <laughs> I 
I mean, I don't spend, yeah. like, invest, like, invest. invest. So he invests money. money and time, flew all the way to Omaha. Mm. He just tell you the part that he drive from there, like what? Oh, Kansas uh, to Kansas City to Omaha. Oh, wow. That's two hours. Yeah. He didn't tell you how, how long you flew. Uh. Wow, 14 hours. To, to Kansas? No, from Singapore to Can- yeah, Kansas. I think 14 hours? Hey, isn't isn't it like uh, you have to like connect? I went to, I went to Japan. Then after I had to take a flight, but definitely, it's enough to. Is it? Uh, it's tiring enough. Okay. It's in tiring. short, uh, it's like almost a whole day, uh, Yeah. In traveling. Yeah. One way, one day. Yeah. Two way is two days. more than two days, uh. Yeah. Okay. But with technology, for me, I didn't flew all the way. So what I did is, uh, in fact, like three years ago, I think three years ago they have started do live streaming. Mm. So through Yahoo Finance, you can watch live stream of Berkshire Hathaway AGM mm. at your own, it's like you can, your own house or whatever, office or whatever, mm. you can watch Berkshire Hathaway live. Uh, it started, uh, like, I think it's Sunday, Saturday night, start from uh, 10 p.m. Uh. They start in the morning, we start at night. Uh. So mm. uh, because we are in Singapore, a different time frame. So to be frank, I didn't watch through the whole AGM. Hmm. Give a guess. How long is their AGM? Like a normal AGM, like let's say in Singapore, Malaysia to be fair, is like maybe two hours, three hour max. I think the longest I've been is to four hours. Four. There's a four hours AGM. Yeah, because I think the shareholders will really have were like so enthusiastic. Oh, so they have a lot of questions that they dread for four. Yeah, four, four hours. hours. Okay, so I think the it, the management is quite generous in their timing yep, which they time. spend four hours to uh, with shareholder mm. but maybe you give us uh, your your guess uh, how long do you think like the AGM perhaps do, do you guys even uh, do, do you guys oh. tune in or maybe if, if you watch it or you, you tell me you watch it yeah. yeah let us know that you watched it then I can ask you a question <laughs> all right but definitely I, I do watch the the AGM yeah. which is the length of time, yeah. which you guess first, I'll disclose an amount of time. I, 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 I go through like around 50 to 60% of the EGM. Mm. Yeah. Wow, we have a reply right here. Meilin, do you go through the full session? Wow, maybe we can invite you to the talk show. You know, uh, she said uh, eight hours. Eight hours. Yeah. Oh my. Uh, you mean, uh, I mean, uh, in, in the comment itself, uh, uh, some of the people will say, eh, one of the, I mean, one of this guy mm. almost dozed off <laughs> because of the long hour. You know how old are they? This guy is 89. What about 89? 92 or 93. So, uh, I would say a grandfather uh, sitting in front of a, 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 t- a camera for almost seven hours. And then you have to know that you have they have to prepare beforehand mm. and then they will leave. So so it's a long hour Egypt. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure is it eight hours, but definitely from the video that I watched is seven hour plus. La. So it's mm. a it's a very long Egypt. Yeah. And they shared a lot, a lot, a lot of great stuff. Okay. Yeah. So, so what are the key three things three key things you learn? Uh, actually uh, they they have shared a lot of stuff. Um they shared uh like uh the one of the things that bring up highlight in it is uh they have announced uh, they have made an acquisition. Yeah. One of the companies that uh, no one would ever thought that uh, Mr. Buffett would buy. Yeah. Which is Amazon. So Amazon uh, is uh, it, it is a conglomerate right now as well. Uh, people always know Amazon as an e-commerce company. Mm. Uh, so uh, if you have a so-called, so-called study, mm. study in Amazon, so you will know that uh, Amazon have a high high PE ratio. Okay. So their valuation is super high. Mm. So for a value investor like Warren Buffett, a lot of uh, so called uh, value investor uh, followers, they think, hey, what happened to Buffett? Do you go nuts? You buy Amazon? Mm. I mean, if, if if this news comes to you, do you have the same talk? Yeah, because most of the time, I think for the longest time that I'm, I've been a shareholder. I always know that he doesn't go into technology, mm. but I think there's definitely something about why this time he allowed. I think, I think to let his generals make this decision. Mm. Yeah, th- th- I guess there's I guess there's something, but of course, uh, outside of what I know from Berkshire Hathaway, of course I've been looking at other YouTube videos. Mm. Definitely, uh, 
I, I'm kind of biased. I just want to make a disclaimer. I'm kind of like, mm. uh, kind of uh, confident of Amazon. Yeah, it's because of the whole game that they're playing. Uh-huh. Especially, because right now, if you, just my own, just my own two cents on uh, Amazon, because right now, everyone goes into recording the voice. Mm. And wait, right now, you, wait. just now, I did mention, right, before Mian go deeper in, commonly known, everyone know Amazon as an e-commerce platform, which mm. means I go there, I buy stuff. It's what commonly known. But Ming An give you the other side of Amazon. Yeah. So the thing, the good, the thing I like about Amazon is that if everybody is going voice, because right now you, you mm. uh, right now for vo- uh, messages that I leave on WhatsApp, normally you see start seeing people using the voice record. So if uh, Amazon plays this whole game very well, it's like next time you just need to. If I'm right now, if I'm showering, maybe in ten years time or ten years time, because that's the ori- horizon that an investor needs to look at. Mm. Ten years, right? You yeah. want to invest in a business. It can in fact last in perpetuity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah minimum <laughs> minimally ten years, yeah. right? So if ten years down the road if voice becomes big and Amazon is going to be like the distributor for brands. Because mm. if everyone is able to stand in their shower room and say that, hey, I want to buy uh uh Alexa, get uh. me my breakfast. So Amazon uh, Amazon has the power to say, okay, let's search within my own brand first just like how and just like how somehow uh, local supermarkets uh-huh. they start putting out their home brands uh-huh. if Amazon is able to help them and help itself build up its own brand or products yeah that's where Amazon is going to be very powerful but disclaimer this is just purely from business model point of view okay yeah so you know what Ming do when he shower <laughs> He talked to Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I mean, I mean for my I mean for my point of view, uh, Amazon is definitely not just a, a e yeah. e-commerce platform. Yeah. He uh, he also collects a lot of data. So yeah. if any initially uh, when he started he just lists the product and then until a stage that uh, he can know what's the next product you want to buy, mm. into a stage that uh, not just books to others uh, like your your groceries and stuff. To a stage like right now, uh, you have your Alexa. You don't type anymore. You just speak to your machine. He can know what you want to buy. Yep. And then not just product, maybe restaurant. Yeah. Or maybe services. Yep. And all this, where does it store? Cloud. The yep. cloud, you know, is not the cloud that they mentioned. The cloud is all the data cloud in the sense that all the servers and stuff where they don't just use themselves, they also rent out their cloud. Mm. So you look at the sky, maybe you have two cloud there, one cloud is owned by Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. So they have been so-called expanding in a lot of uh, front, especially in data front, uh, I would say. Yeah. So if you look, just still look at uh, Amazon as a global e-commerce company, maybe you have to rethink again. Mm, uh, maybe digging deeper. Uh, in terms of business model but yeah. what if you look at their numbers uh, as what we have shared just now Amazon is a high PE company mm. they have high valuation it's I mean commonly known as an expensive company mm. but why our Mr. Buffett would invest in it so, so a disclaimer like I watch, watch the uh, watch the, the AGM so this is the first question being brought mm. and then he addressed it straight away uh, in terms of like uh, management, uh, I mean, uh, when you look at AGM, you always like to have a, like management answer your question directly. Mm. You don't want him to like shoot left, shoot right, in the end he doesn't answer your question. So uh, one of the key things that you look at AGM is uh, you like to look at uh, are they candid or are they uh, honest or are they being straightforward to answer the question. Yeah. Yeah, so this is what I learned inside the AGM is you have to find uh, managements that are very straightforward and candid when they answer the question. Yeah. So what uh, Buffett has said is, actually this decision is not made by me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he, he straight away said, hey, this is not my decision, it's my mm. team decision. But he also didn't uh, like, like really like rule out that uh, this, is, uh, this is not his uh, I mean not his uh, problem. Mm. Because in the end day, he's still the uh, CEO and a director of the company. Yeah. So he's still answerable. So what he have mentioned that all these leaders are, he also didn't say what well, this leader, well, I don't know what they do. Right? He answer, so-called answer on behalf of the investment decision. He didn't particularly say who buy it, 
but definitely in a team or the two investment manager, one of it. So uh, one of the things that I learned is that he didn't really pinpoint or so-called put the put the pressure or put the responsibility on the person who buy. Mm. Because in the end of the day, uh, he as a CEO and an executive director, he so-called um, take the responsibility as well. Mm. Yeah. So this is one of the things that um, I admire about him. He didn't say who, but definitely he has, uh, he showed that he also took the responsibility, mm. yeah, which is uh, very, very admirable. So yeah. what he said is, um, this is a, a decision made by one of the investment, uh, 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 so-called uh, investments, planner strategies, what is, what is the thing to call? Um, one of the investment leader, uh, mm. I don't know what the term call. Uh, and they invest still based on value investing. Yeah. Okay. So then the question is, so what's the value investing he mentioned about? Mm. What is value investing? So commonly when uh, people look into value, uh, people always look at like price to book. Okay. Uh, they look at uh, the net book or net uh, net worth of the company, mm -hmm. and then they want to have a discount, and then they base the company valuation on the discount. Mm. Okay. So this is a uh, price to book valuation, a common low uh, value, so called value towards investing. But of course, as we mentioned earlier, the value investing way of uh, one of the way have changed across the year. Mm. So they also take into account of their future growth. Mm. whether the company can continue to grow. Yeah. So he, what he believed is uh, this investment manager also look at the growth and then so-called uh, discount it at current value mm. and see whether is it worthwhile to invest. Mm. So of course uh, they bought it means they, they really believe in the company growth, they know the value and then they purchase the company. Mm. All right. He didn't disclose what's the valuation or uh, how they come, in a bit, come, come to this decision is mm. because um, they are not an investment so-called uh, firm mm. whereby they need to address how they buy it because yeah. in the end of the day this is their proprietary knowledge or proprietary way to invest into the business mm. all right and in fact as an investment holding company actually they don't really need to disclose amazon because it doesn't reach a threshold but they feel that hey uh, they need to so-called share with investors some of the changes that they have so commit mm. so they, they share with the investor hey uh, we have buy into amazon yeah all right so maybe um for the sake of uh, uh, analyzing Amazon. If you are interested, maybe you just let us know. Maybe we go into Wellpark. And uh, if you would like to know what is the reason or what is the, the thinking behind, uh, and maybe we deduce from the numbers itself. If you like to look into Amazon, you just let us know that Amazon, just type in Amazon, then you know you go into Amazon. Uh, are any of the like, viewers like shareholders have Amazon? Oh yeah. Yeah, anyone, uh, are you an Amazon shareholder? No. Yeah, definitely I'm not as well. So no. uh, we can look into a uh, third person point of view. Yeah. Uh, a more so-called uh, objective. Lah. Yeah, so dro uh, just drop in the comments below saying that, yeah, probably an uh, Amazon shareholder. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I see Diane Tan. Amazon! Are you a shareholder? Yeah, are you a shareholder? <laughs> yeah. But uh, maybe you are a user. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely, I, I purchased uh, through Amazon. Yeah. Uh, you have team member, uh, so called uh, purchase through Amazon as well. You have Amazon Prime member in our office. Yeah. So uh, every few days, you see a parcel come in. Uh, and then one of our team members that uh, they, I mean, he just bought a house. Uh, so he buy oven, uh, like training equipment, uh, also through Amazon. Yeah. So this is how, how some of the, the purchase, like uh, so called. What is it called? Uh, habit mm. have changed whereby you don't go to the retail outlet anymore. So you just purchase in uh, mm. Amazon Prime. No, considering. Yeah, Meiling said Amazon. Eh? Yip Ming, Yip Ming just come in. So Yip Ming, uh, hi Ming, <laughs> just come in. Okay. Yeah, so since we have uh, people like to look at Amazon, uh, all right, just switch on your well park and we look at Amazon. Mm. All right. So how to look into Amazon? Just uh, actually, I just I have uh, put into this really because uh, yeah, well, part show. Okay, Amazon. Okay, so uh, if you like to build a watch list, you can always build a watch list in a way that uh, the companies that you like to always follow. Uh, so uh, if you don't know how to build watch list, always go to the go to the uh, Facebook learn. You go to units. And then you'll find one of it is how to uh, set up watch list, alright? Mm. So from there you know how to set up a watch list, okay? Mm. So of course I have uh, quite a number of watch lists because uh, 
uh, prepare content for you all <laughs> and also for, for my own study. La. So tonight I will we all part watch this. So uh, we go through uh, Amazon first. Huh? So uh, in a in a so called uh, a simple view, you can know that Amazon is a three star cheetah MOS minus three one nine. So what uh, what all this means? If you haven't know how to use it, same thing. Go to about part learn. Yep. You go to unit and all the uh, modules are there. So this three star is WP rating. The center one is animal type, which is uh, the star chart. And lastly, MOS is the IV line. So let us go into Amazon in details. Mm. So in Amazon, uh, I, I think I don't go through what is it about already. La. So we have talked mu very much about what the company does. Mm. Let us go into uh, the WP rating instead. So for WP rating, uh, Amazon is a global e-commerce company. So they have their, their so-called financial statement. As, uh, right now, we can analyze the financial statement in a way that we can uh, analyze the 13 item below. Mm. So if like a financial company, because of their numbers is totally different, so we cannot so called pick the numbers and analyze straight away. Uh, we have to make an adjustment in terms of like the, the, the items. Okay, so uh, right now they are three star compared to the market itself. Compared to the peer, they are also three star. Means their numbers in terms of like uh, do the management expose investor into business risk. Mm. So what the business risk that we detect is all below. So there's items like quality of earnings, uh, goodwill, cash analysis. These are the th 13 items of uh, business risk that uh, the business manager could put you into. Mm. So we like to detect and whether this company are so-called good enough and the business management would not uh, uh, input all those risks into investors. All right. So uh, for example, let's say quality of earnings. Quality of earnings simply means whether the, the earnings that they declare, they can get back as cash form. Mm. All right, uh, because some of the companies they, they declare a lot of earnings but they didn't collect cash back. Yeah. So if it's green means they have uh, so called low risk, uh, and then uh, red means high risk. Okay. If you see red means uh, bye bye, go look at it already. Okay. Okay. And then uh, we look at star chart. So Amazon they have been growing very very fast. Yeah, growing tremendously fast. Later I'll show you the chart is boom like exponential. Yeah. And then uh, you can see that they they are making a bit of profit. That's why they score three. It's not a really asset heavy company, score two, and then uh, they have quite a good health like at four, mm. not giving up any dividends, right? Uh, without going to IV line, we go to key ratio first, so you can see that their margin is increasing, okay? Mm. So I think one of the key reasons that I, uh, they didn't mention much, but uh, I deduce, uh, I just deduce on my own point of view, I just, um, I just think, uh, one of the reasons that they look into is because the, you look at the purple color line, purple color line, mm. so you can see that hey, actually their profit margin is improving. Yeah, from one uh, percent improved to three percent. Which I mean, it, it's not really fantastic for a company to earn one percent or three percent kind of a margin. But uh, if you understand enough of a company, which I will show later, this may translate into a lot of uh, profit. Yeah. Right when it improved by one percent. Okay. Yeah. But definitely, right now, a one to three percent is a very very thin margin. Anything change, the company lose money. Mm. Yeah. So this is the thing that if you invest in a company, you have to really really follow closely on the margin itself yeah all right and then you look at their balance sheet um they have uh, take up quite an amount of debt although they have current cash ratio which means they have a liquidity on top of, in terms of like assets mm -hmm. but the debt is piling and then it's like almost one time mm -hmm. so one equity one debt okay which mm -hmm. is uh i would consider very high mm -hmm. but when you look at cash flow so these are the things that um like like Warren Buff, uh, like Bush had away, but uh, in a different sense that uh, uh, they are different business model, their cash flow has been growing tremendously. Yeah. So as a company like Amazon, they can collect like in terms of cash flow for operation is almost the same like Bush had away. Oh. Near amazing. forty billion. Amazing. Forty billion, and then of course they also invest quite a bit, uh, in terms of capex. But in the other day, they are free cash flow is growing like crazy as well yeah so they can collect a lot of cash flow but uh, whether they can invest like buffer this one not not sure lah. but in the way that how they invest is they reinvest their own business mm. yeah, so this is how uh, amazon different from Pashar. the way Pashar is like they have the cash flow they invest in maybe in other business for amazon they reinvest in their own business mm. so they have their own warehouse they have their own cloud servers and stuff like that and then uh, they can rent out their their cloud servers Okay, so, so they have been reinvesting into their business. So if you ask me, uh, how is their valuation look like? Uh, you can, I mean, for us, we can look at 
uh, discounted future earning, which right now is like 400 over. Mm -hmm. Or maybe uh, if you like look at cash flow, it's like a thousand right now. Yeah. So it, it's still a very overvalued kind of a company, I would say. Mm. Yeah, if, but if you know and you in analyze enough of a company, then maybe you have different point of view. And uh, of course, if you're optimistic of the growth itself, or too optimistic about growth, anything happen to the growth rate, you will suffer. Yeah. So when when people are too optimistic, maybe you should um, hold back a bit. Hold back a bit, and then uh, make your own judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of time, uh, some of my friends or some of the investors will say, "Hey, Warren Buffett invest into it, like, should I invest?" Uh, <laughs> this is the questions that uh we always get, lah, right? Yeah. Like, Warren Buffett buy the company, hey. How, how can it be junk? Okay, but Warren Buffett do make mistake. Yeah. Which yes, 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 <laughs> so which is one of the next company that uh, he brought up or some of the investor brought, which is uh, Kraft Heinz. Ah. Yeah. I have, I've, I've told you early in, in this uh, video, right? Uh, yeah. In life, right? I'll be talking a lot of company, right? So instead of like, talking about philosophy and theory, we go straight into companies and then we analyze using companies. Mm. I think this is one of the feedback that I get uh, that uh, like uh, our users would like to learn more like, how, how to really look into companies in terms of numbers and then yep. uh, look into the business model. Okay, so, so what do we have here? So um, and before we go into craft finds, uh, uh, did I mention the three points? Yeah, so the three key things about uh, Amazon is you have to always look out is right now they are, they are, they are very tiny margin, mm. high depth, mm. but they have cash flow growing. La. So it, you have to take care of the two risks which is uh, tiny margin and high debt if you really like to look into Amazon. Okay. Mm. So the companies yeah. that Buffett made mistake last year is Kraft Heinz. Yes. And actually this company we did share about uh, in one of the case study. Uh, if you haven't followed it, maybe we just go through it again here. Okay. So uh, a brief uh, sharing about how it, like uh, Warren Buffett invested into Kraft Heinz. Uh, he invested into Kraft Heinz through a partnership with 3G Capital. Yep. So 3G Capital is also a, a so-called value investor. It's kind of a uh, group and then they work with uh, Berkshire Hathaway, which they well, Berkshire Hathaway have a lot of money lah. Let's say, if you know how much Berkshire Hathaway cash has lah, they have hundred billion cash. It's hundred billions. Wow. So, <laughs> so they have a lot of money. So that's why there will be groups like they will work partner with uh, Berkshire Hathaway and then invest into a, a big company. Lah. So yeah. Craftfine is one of the company. Mm. So back then, uh, they have opportunity to have Craft and Heinz merged together mm. and uh, at the point, same point of time, Berkshire Hathaway with 3 Capital invested into it. So um, he did mention, uh, everyone who look at it, uh, like uh, maybe I will just clarify back then when we look at it, uh, what is the thing that we identified. Uh, same thing, let us go to Wild Park. Okay. Fair enough, let's, let's go. go to Wild Park. Yeah, I think this is a, a better way for us to learn together. Uh. Mm. Yeah, so Kraft Heinz, eh, actually I, 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 yeah. Okay, so this is the problem when you have too many companies in your watch list, you have slowed down the process, all right? So if, if you have 100 companies in your watch list, yeah, you experience some, uh, some delay because it's a lot of processing. Okay, so when we go to Kraft Heinz, one of the things that we previously pointed out is in that, inside their TAPP rating, there's this item which is goodwill and intangible asset. So previously, uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, it's Kraft uh, buy into Heinz. So uh, in terms of their books, uh, mm. uh, Kraft have overpaid, so-called overpaid. Uh, they paid a lot uh, and buy into Heinz and resulted in a huge, huge goodwill. Yeah, there's a lot of goodwill. So if I'm not wrong, it's like 20 over 30% uh, is goodwill. So Do you know goodwill? Uh, maybe I refresh again. So goodwill is something like, uh, yeah. maybe this clock, this clock is like uh twenty dollars. Yeah. And then uh, I sell to Mingan. Yeah. Mingan pay me thirty dollars. But it's only twenty. But it's a very good watch. It can generate you a lot of uh, uh so called time and uh. then give you a lot of like uh a mileage into your your business uh. and then you can effectively make your life far more better. Okay, 30. Okay, yeah. So this is when the good will come in. Yeah. So this thing is $20. So he bought it, he paid $30. Yeah. 
So the ten dollar is goodwill. Yeah, yeah. it's a goodwill I give Eric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so with that, um, he I mean in terms of the merger itself, uh, mm. Kraft have overpaid uh, Heinz in a in a way uh, it's like twenty over thirty percent more lah. I mean, uh, the numbers is roughly like that. Uh, which is also what uh Warren Buffett openly admit. So likewise. This is how you assess management. Is he openly said that, yeah, we have overpaid the deal. Yeah, so he he then didn't go left, go right, and say, uh, no la, uh, it may be like they maybe no. So he straight away say, yes, the the acquisition uh is overpaid. Mm. But he also uh very clearly said that why he go into it, because and what what happened and what is happening right now. So they go into it because. Craftfine is a good brand, mm. and then they can they work with TG Capital, and then they can fine tune the business within, create a synergy so that they can lower down the cost and make profit from it, mm. long term sustainably. Mm. So if you know Craftfine, they produce like uh, groceries. Is it called groceries like food lah? I always know the ketchup. Yeah, ketchup, Heinz ketchup. If you go to McDonald, Heinz ketchup. Yeah. Uh, Kraft cheese. Yes. All right. So these are the products that are well known. That's a brand that uh they can always go. It's always at a, a supermarket shelf. Yeah, Oreo. Okay. Oreo is them? Think so. No, Oreo is Mondelez. Is it? Yeah, Oreo is Mondelez. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So uh, this is how you can find their products lah. Mm. And uh, they they also didn't really uh, discount the management itself. Mm. So one thing about what they have, what they buy into companies, they they also observe the management. So Warren Buffett also manager and said, yeah, the operation the, the operation is improving. Mm. Uh, the the manager are trying their best or they doing their best to improve their margins, improve yeah. their operations. Yeah. So he will he will still give time for them to improve their business. Mm. So if you know, uh, if I'm not wrong, the the time they have bought Kraft Heinz, so called, uh, the price itself, they are suffering losses lah. Mm. Suffering losses like maybe. Forty percent, if I'm not wrong. Okay. They are they have been suffering losses on Kraftfine, but they are still holding on because they believe this management can improve the business. Mm. Yeah. So they are giving time for the management. Okay. Uh, so. But the, the but the key thing is, same thing for us. Uh, is it good time to invest Kraftfines? We don't. I mean, for for me, I didn't invest Kraft. Uh, do you invest? Okay. So you also can look at it at a third person point of view. Very objectively, okay. So let's say uh, you look at Star Chart. Definitely, uh-huh. it is not a very uh, a company we have a huge mode lah. Although it's a very well known brand, the company has not growth. Uh, the uh, profitability is small, dividend small, half small. Uh, but I think this is why they go into business and hope the operation of these two merger company can improve this mode lah. Okay, mm. and uh, let's say we go into their balance sheet. This is where I want to point out the the. Goodwill, okay. If you go to balance sheet, you go to this thing which is goodwill and other intangible, mm. okay. So you can look at wow, the yeah, goodwill and other intangible in terms of the total assets is oh, almost eighty percent. Yeah, almost eighty percent. So they have a lot of goodwills and other intangible right here. Yeah. So if anything, they want to write off this is the amount that they write off a loss. Yeah, they can write okay. off easily. So these are things that are uh, investor you should alert. Yeah. And then if anything happen, these are the things that uh you may uh you are risking your capital. Yeah. Okay. But this is the capital that um Warren Buffett they all know and then they are willing to take. Yeah. But is it same for you? Um I think you have to assess your own risk. Yeah. Okay. So this is for Kraft Heinz. So it may be a good business, but if you buy a wrong valuation, you still yeah. suffer. Alright. So this just now we always say that. Like, uh yeah. wonderful company. You buy a fair value, it's alright. But if it's an average company, you buy a discount. It's not so good. But let's you buy a fair value, then you have a potential of making losses. Awesome. Yeah. So probably right now, if you are, if you have built your watch list in a wealth park, you just mm. might just want to go and take a quick look after this whole talk show ends. Go and look mm. through the whole companies, especially on the balance sheet. Do you see your invest in your companies or the businesses? Right? Do they have a very high goodwill? Or other intangibles, because mm. if it's occupying almost like like what we see craft finds right, it's almost like eighty percent of the total assets. You really have to be, uh, just think a bit more mindful because sometimes goodwill and other intangibles right, it can be easily written off. Mm. Yeah, then suddenly you see that hey, why overnight the yeah. whole 
the number of uh, your their profit and, just gone. Yeah. So the asset suddenly you see see shrinking a lot. So yeah. that's also one of the key things that please yeah if go look through mm. and see whether your company or business or stock has good will a lot of goodwill. Mm. So this is the key thing. Okay. Uh actually I got a lot more to share. Yep. Uh maybe I'll 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 just uh skip one of the com- I mean uh I'll just simplify it. Yes. So another point also about company is uh they, they compare online platform. So right now a lot of uh, businesses they declare or they, they share themselves their online platform. Yeah. Like in, in I think around like Southeast Asia region we have a lot la. So we have uh, one of the biggest ones is Grab la. Mm. Okay, so if one day Grab go IPO, um uh I don't know. Uh, uh I don't know. But definitely I'll look into the numbers first la. Mm. So pre- previously in in uh, beginning of the year till now, there's a lot of company went IPO. Uh we also received a, co- a lot of questions. Uh, if you follow the IPO news, it's like you have Uber IPO just recently, not making money. Uh, you have Lyft IPO. It's also something like Uber mm. or IPO, and uh, a lot more la. Zoom. If you go webinar, there's Zoom IPO. So a lot of platform business have been going IPO. Mm. All right, and then one of the companies that uh, Buffett mentioned, or one of the company, not Buffett, is one of the shareholders they asked la. So how do you address technology change? And uh, like let's say for Nebraska Furniture, mm. uh, compared with this company called Wayfair. So Wayfair is also a listed company that they uh, online platform that sells uh, furniture. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, Wayfair's have been growing very fast, like Amazon growing very fast, but their profit margin is nothing. Okay, they are not making profit, but they are growing very fast. So should Nebraska Furniture or should Warren Buffett worry about this kind of business because in their day, let's say your market share has been taken up, your Nebraska Furniture cannot make money, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he said he also aware, uh, but the thing is this, the business model is different. Wayfair, they do it online. They doesn't have customer touch. The Nebraska Furniture, although they still have, they do, they do, they still do online, mm. but they have this retail shop whereby they have customers touch, they can collect feedback from customer directly, and uh, they have more intimate relationship with the customer mm. compared to Wayfair. Okay? Mm. Uh, what I pick up from this is, uh, in their day, um, regardless, they have a retail shop, brick and mortar, in their day, they're still selling a the products. Yeah. How to make money is how they sell products. The company that could sell the product win the game. Yeah. That's what I feel. And when they sell the product itself, they can sustainably uh, make profit. This is the winner. Mm. All right. So this is how uh, Amazon turned out. Uh. So Amazon turned out, uh, he can continue grow, grow revenue and then grow products and then grow their uh, profit margins. Wayfair is not a proven model. Okay. Whereby they haven't made money yet. Okay. So he said he's aware, but uh, he's not so worried in the sense that uh, Nebraska Furniture, they also do online but they focus on giving customer service. Mm. Yeah. Because in the end of the day, product and service, platform is just platform. Yeah. You can sell it at the mall, you can sell it at the street, market, internet, in the end, mm. who can sell the products and who deliver the good products. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what I conclude there. Yeah. Mm. All right. So if really Uber uh, or maybe Grab or whatever platform, uh, business IPO, uh, Maybe I I I will I will look at it, but I, I will be very cautious. Like, I will not really invest in it because, in the end of the day, can you make the service sustainable, uh, mm. lead throughout the years, lah. Like, all right. Yep. So this is the the wrap up for the Berkshire Hathaway. There's a lot more. If you like to know all all the uh, summary itself, uh, in the internet there's a lot more, like. If you like to link to watch the seven hours, uh, AGM, I also can provide you the link. Uh, yeah. So these a uh, few things that. I think it will be beneficial for all your all the well part users because in the end of the day we like to so called look in the company and analyze the business. Mm. Yeah. So this is the three companies that I pick up. I think that um really relevant to this uh, situation about a lot of platform business, uh business that turn around or business like business either way how to analyze it. So mm. if you think today there's a lot of value, please give us a like and then uh Actually, I got a lot more secret that I will share with you. If you, if I see a lot of light, then I will share you the secret. Yeah.
Okay. Secret always keep to the last. Yeah. I have a great secret that I want to uncover to you all. Uh, hey, Mina, did I uncover to you yet? I don't think so. I'm also waiting. <laughs> so this is the secret weapon. Not secret weapon. It's a secret stuff that I've uh, built and I, I really love it. And then I really think that you all would definitely love it. Mm. Because analyzing a number uses a lot of time. Mm. And then I will show you a way that uh, you can analyze a number even faster so that you can have a lot more time to look at the business itself. Oh, so there are a lot of sh- there are a lot of short not say shortcuts, time saver tips. Yeah. Time so just tips. now I've saved you three, four hours to look into company numbers, right? This one is the three four times hundred or maybe no it's not hundred theoretically if uh, a, a, a exchange is 700 so it's like well how many hours uh, i can't count ah thousand or thousand of hours you can save mm. so so what is it yeah so if you like to know it give me like give me like i would like it myself <laughs> okay so if you like to know the secret Yin Hong! Hi Yin Hong! <laughs> I want to know your secret. Ha ha! Stay, stay. Stay with me. I will, I will unlock the secret. And then I will share you the secret. Alright? Okay. Yeah, I see a lot of light coming in. Yeah, I need more, I need more. Okay? I tell you, uh, this 20 over 30 people who watch this live, uh, you get the first hand, you know. This first hand uh, secret uh, will save you a lot of time straight away. And then if you are fast enough, yeah. you can invest maybe tonight. But I, I, I will say don't, don't, don't. So, 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 I will say um, anxious first or so uh, excited and then straight away go by. You still need some time to cool down and make a good decision. Yeah. But this will definitely accept you. Okay? So let me unlock the secret. Okay? So for wild part heavy users like Ming An, maybe she haven't discovered yet because our announcement is not out yet. Like our risk financial statement is not out. Uh, we'll be sharing with all of them. Yeah. But since you all are here, you know that already. So the company overview we have updated. Our risk financial statement we have updated. And right now our screeners. Yes, it's screener. Let's go to screener. If you have been using screener very frequently, you will see when you look at my screener right here, it's totally different, okay? Previously, the screener is like, uh, you have a standard screener, a standard set, mm-hmm. but every time a screen, different type of metrics or different type of way, uh, you have to readjust. Yeah. You have to adjust every time. Right now, we have a multi-screener function. Oh. All right? This multi-screener function is, you can save your screener, so you don't need to adjust anymore, all right? And today, I would like to share with you three screeners that I use, all right, that I use, okay? These three screeners, namely, Buffett Big Cap Growth, Lynch Small Cap Growth, and Dividend Collectors, okay? Mm. So I will share with you how, how I set up this screener so that you can set up your own and then maybe you can readjust at your own uh, preference, uh, mm. all right? So, but this, this uh, thing behind it is, uh, although I use Buffett, his name, uh, it may not directly mimic his strategy, okay? Because some of the criteria that we have inside uh, Wild Park is not completely matched, but I would say these are all uh, so-called Buffett-like, Buffett-like big cap uh, mm. criteria. So I'll make it as close to as Buffett strategy. Mm. Lynch, if uh, you don't know who is Lynch, uh, you can search for Peter Lynch. Mm. Uh, he wrote one up of one up from Wall Street or one up, one up Wall Street one up Wall Street okay yeah, one up Wall Street. so he is one of the growth investors mm. so I think if not wrong uh, his result is better than Buffett uh, mm, Buffett yes. is like or average like 20% his returns like 15 years is the average 30% so he always invests in growth type of companies okay so if you like to look at it uh, the reason why he can grow is because he invests in small cap growth okay and then lastly for those who love dividend I'll show you the dividend screener all right Yes. Okay, so for, are you ready? Yes. Okay, so let's go. Um, once you come to this, uh, you can always manage your 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 uh, screener right here. You can just ah. add screeners, okay? Or you want to manage screeners. So for example, I want to add screener. You can just click add and then key in the name inside, okay? Ah. So 
or you can just manage screener by changing the name okay so there's a default screener that there's name screener for you already so this is your previous setup for the screener okay so if you previously already set up screener there will be one screeners that's already been there okay if, yeah so if you add just add it okay mm. so let's say if uh, you were to add a buffered big cap screeners so you can just go to uh, the three dotted eh? uh, how is it okay uh, so, am I? Let me just go to it again. Uh, you go to the three dotted, uh -huh. and then you just click add screener. Uh -huh. Okay. If you like to add the screener for buffer big cap, add it right now. I give you some time. Just tap. Uh, just tap on add screener. You just tap in whatever name you like. It may not be buffered. <laughs> it can be uh, let's say Ming An name. Ming An big cap growth. Mm. Any name you like. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, this is uh, the screener that I create for my, myself. Mm. I would like to have buffered light. Uh, if you know, buffered can, uh, can, can never shoot rabbit anymore. You have to shoot elephant or big wheel. Means you have to, the amount of 1 billion of cash, I uh, cannot use 100 million to buy a small company. Because it doesn't, doesn't take any effect for the company. So you yeah. have to buy big company. So for me, uh, if I like to buy companies like buffered big cap company, so how would I set up? So I already pre-set up. Uh, if uh, you are you really please set up once you set up ready once you click it will show you the company the screeners straight away oh. but let's say if I have to reset up um, this is the page that you reset up you click the gear and then you open up these few uh, uh, things that uh, I set up inside uh, buffered big cap screener mm. so what I would uh, screen inside buffered big cap screener is I will start my WP rating I will open up my financial health growth Net profit margin, ROE, yeah. the three year uh, Kager growth in terms of EPS. Yes. I would like to look at bottom line and then uh, debt to equity and lastly market cap. Yeah. Why? Because I like to look at big cap. All right. So maybe we go through again WP rating, financial health, growth, net profit margin, ROE, uh, three year Kager EPS growth, debt to equity, and market cap. All right. Yeah, so this is only for the 20 year odd people that looking it right now. Yeah, you look at my screener straight away. But of course, uh, it's not a uh, uh, so called uh, a foolproof screener in a sense that uh, I will show you why uh, later on. But mm. I will set the screener first because our job is to screen across the countries. All right. Mm. So let's say you have set up the, you have opened up the criteria. Next, depends on the market that you have. You just uh, choose the market you have, or let's say you just want to pick up the, the few few markets that you have. So yep. uh, for me, I just pick up like Hong Kong, the, the two uh, China exchange, NASDAQ, New York. So I pick the big economy. Okay. Right? Because in this big economy, uh, this is where Buffett will go. Yeah, you cannot go to small country whereby they have uh, only like small companies. So you go to big countries, okay? Mm. So likewise, if you like to upgrade, just just text words okay so here uh, first I'll exclude the OTC stocks I don't want to small companies mm -hmm. and then uh, the WP rating always two star and above financial health I would like to three and above so that I can uh, a lot more company first uh, if you like to more stringent you can set at four but I said three at current so financial health three growth three net profit margin have to make at least 10% ROE have to at least 10% debt to equity uh, zero to one. I I give them a bit of a uh, buffer lah. Okay. Maybe they borrow a bit more, especially some of the U.S. company that's good one. They mm. they do share buyback using that because of uh, tax efficiency. Okay. Yeah. So, but I don't want they use too much debt, so I cap at one. So it's zero to one. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they must have uh, the EPS three year KGA growth of ten percent, and I like to large and mega cap company. I want to have big wheel elephant. So when Buffett shoot, like his cannon. I shoot my pistol. <laughs> Alright. So uh, this is the companies that screen out. So if you know the company like Agilent, Baxter's Corning, if you know Corning Corningware, but they don't do Corningware anymore. Corning is the, the uh, phone screen, yeah. the phone glass that they uh, produce. And then uh, you have uh, Edward Life Science. Those who are in life science industry, this is the one of the most familiar name that you know. Chow Sock Corporation. So Chow Sock is something like a broker. Lah. 
uh, so-called discount broker in, uh, in US that are very, very huge, Align Technology, uh, Facebook, Garmin, okay, if those who run a lot, mm. uh, Garmin is uh, a thing that you always know, Lululemon, uh, ladies, I think this is the brand that you're most familiar with. Okay, so all these companies that are so-called huge big companies, like Intel, Microsoft, so there's a lot more, like Foshan High Team Flavoring. So those who in China or Chinese, uh, I think this is one of the most familiar band that you know, like the Kijap, what is it called Kijap? Soy sauce, yeah, soy sauce. Soy sauce that you use for cooking, Shanghai International. So, so these are the company. Uh, after you screen out, that fit your criteria, that's where you look into the numbers. So here definitely have saved you a lot of time. Mm. There's thousands and thousands of companies right here. Yeah. It's just times four. I don't know how much time it's like. Uh, Buffett used his 50 years to look at every annual report. Right now you don't need 50 years. Lah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so this is the first screener. Anyone would like to know the next screener, Lean Small Cap? Do you think Lean Small Cap is interesting enough? Yeah, especially if you want to use it to grow your grow your capital. Definitely you need to go the cap capital appreciation route. Okay. There's a few more people coming in suddenly. <laughs> but never mind. Hey, do you all want to know Lynch small cap growth? You know what? One of the reasons why Buffett and Lynch is different, I mean in terms of like result, uh, I think it's because Lynch they purchase like small and mid cap company. Ah. Yeah. So they they purchase this small and big company whereby they can have growth capacity whereby, uh, I mean for comparison, uh, uh, do you think it's easier to grow one billion to two billion, or easier to grow hundred million to two hundred billion? The second one. Yeah. Hundred to two hundred. Yeah. So hundred to two hundred. So that's where the small cap company came about. So if you invest in small cap company, definitely they can grow, uh, in the sense that they are so called absolute amount is smaller but they can grow definitely faster. Mm. If you pick a good company that can grow, that's where your capital can also what? Grow. Yeah. Want to know more? Edison, this is for you, okay? <laughs> yeah, so the rest, I will wait y'all coming in bit by bit, but let me just disclose to y'all. So Lean Small Cap Growth, same thing, if uh, you haven't set up the screener, if you already set up screener, it will show you a list of company, but if you haven't set up, huh? let us just go set up. So um, same thing here, what I will set up right here is, I'll go for WP Rating, Financial Health, Growth, uh, Gross Profit Margin, Net Profit Margin, ROE, and right now, instead of going to bottom line, I go for the top line, the three year revenue growth. Oh, okay. Because I want to look at, uh, when they grow their revenue, which can be faster, and then their profit follows, then it will be fantastic. Mm. So I'll be I'll looking more on the three-year revenue growth. Okay. And one of the key things that I'll look at is debt to equity. I will not like them to involve themselves into too much debt. Mm. And then lastly is market cap. Market cap is basically I will look at smaller cap, la, okay. small mid cap. Okay. So after you say, uh, maybe I repeat again, WP rating, mm. financial health, financial health, growth, growth. Uh, gross profit margin, gross profit margin, net profit margin, net profit margin, net profit margin ROE, ROE, three year revenue growth, three year revenue growth, debt to equity, debt to equity, and market cap, market cap. So, after we set up this, just click OK or click the tick. Yep. That's where we set up our engine. Our engine right here, same thing. You select exchange, exclude. Uh, right here, also same thing. I exclude all OTC stock. I would not want to look at OTC stock. Okay, here I'll be more stringent on small cap company. Mm. Okay. Uh, because small cap company, uh, there's a lot of risk. Okay. Yeah, they have to fight with the big brothers. Okay. They have to be fast. Uh, if they don't have a, a good, uh, foothold, they may uh, just flip anytime. Okay. So I would like to have a higher financial health, which I right now set a four financial health. I will set a growth of four and above. Mm. Gross profit margin have to be at least thirty percent. Mm. Net profit margin ten. ROE at least 10, debt to equity 0 to 1. Same thing, uh, I will give them a bit more room to borrow a bit money, mm. but I will not like them to borrow more than 1. Okay. Okay. But, but if you ask me what is the confident amount that I would like, definitely is 0.5 and below. But here I give them a bit of room, because maybe they will take some debt to grow their business. And then uh, also I would like to have the 3 year revenue growth at least 
ten percent. Okay. So okay. the market size, I I put it micro, small, and mid. Mm. After that, you can just start your screening. Yep. Wow, I have one three eight companies right here. Yep. If you think it's a bit too much, you can make it a bit more stringent. Yep. Let's say you make the growth at least twenty percent. I never did this. Maybe let us do this now. If I I want to have more growth, I said thirty percent. How is the result like? More stringent right now. I left with eighty nine company, so we can look at a lot of company right here. So, uh, okay, one thing about a small cap growth company right here is, uh, we will have to look a a lot more in terms of like their business model management, because they are the driver of the company. So, uh, I would suggest start from your own country. Let's say you base in Singapore. Look at Singapore companies because you can do due diligence. You can you can do groundwork. You can check with the management and stuff like that. Mm. And you want to be closer to the management itself. Okay. Because you want to follow the growth. So for smaller cap growth, I would suggest that you follow your country. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, let's say if I in Malaysia, you can uh some of the company like my EG um I will not uh talk about this, but uh but Vitrox okay a uh, very very company very very good management and uh. Some of the companies, uh, if you know about Fifty One Job, is one of the uh, job platform in China. They list in US. Oh. And then uh, some of the companies like here. Actually, there's a lot more. Uh. Fire Rock, they do gaming. Uh, China Maple Leaf Educational System, uh, they do an uh, online educational platform. Uh, you can look into it if mm-hmm. you like to. Uh, like ah, this is the companies that I cover as well. Yihai International. Um, if you if those who like to go Thailand Bangkok, after you I think it's a companies that you you know about. They do dessert. <laughs> if you if you have a girlfriend or you like to go with your wife, you to go for dessert. You can go for after you. Uh, but here I I not advocating uh, about the company. I don't own a company to clarify. But uh, they they always have a queue outside lah. Mm. Uh, and uh, because of queue, I never never eat their dessert. Okay, it's too long. Uh, and some of the the Chinese companies, wow, it is too much. It's too much. So if you are like Hong Kong, uh, oh, this is Chow. Eh, this list in Shenzhen, ah, Zhou Chow Tai Sing. Oh, I think it's different from Chow Sing Sing. I think it's different from Zhou Shenzhen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's a lot of company right here. Same thing. This need a lot more studies. Mm. Yeah. This need a lot more study, but. The numbers have done it for you. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just briefly go into numbers. Okay. Lastly, dividend collectors. Yes. Do all want dividend collectors? Because ah, uh, <laughs> actually my plan ah uh, is to end it at uh around eight thirty, but ah uh, since we are so I see a lot of interaction ah, uh, I I see a lot of uh, uh interaction from you all and ah uh, we can't help but share more with you all uh. Sure. Go yeah. ahead. And then I have used uh quite a bit of time from Ming An. <laughs> yeah, but. The same thing. Yes. The times that you have invested with us here, our aim is to add a lot more value to you. So if you like dividend collector screener, please say yes. Yes. Wow, Edwin, I see a lot. Yes, thank you, Edwin. <laughs> okay. So, likewise, um, I'll disclose to this uh uh screener for you, and um, to benefit you in terms of like analyzing company, uh, maybe. It's good to always start with your own country mm. because you have a uh, closer uh interaction with the management. Mm. Especially you can attend their AGM, interact with them. Mm. But as uh as your so called uh your your universe grow, whereby mm. you like to expand more into more companies, uh then you can go into your foreign countries. Yeah. Which sometimes they call it international securities lah. Yeah. So um in financial world they always say uh. Uh, we look at domestic first. They always look in domestic countries, but for us, I think right now we are global. Uh, global because of globalizations, we are more receptible. We can receive a lot more information, and of course, with well park, mm. we have all the data at your fingertips. So it make investing uh far more easier in terms of like in analyzing numbers. Okay. The next step is really going to the management. All right, and here, dividend collector. Can't follow because you are going too fast. <laughs> Alright, Diane, no worries. Uh, this video will be up on the the well part about I O. Yeah. You you can always go back. Um, but because of time, uh, I I think we go to dividend collector first. If we got a lot more time, then we go back. Okay. So, 
Let's go to Dividend Collectors. Yes. Are Let's you go. ready? Yes. Let's go. Dividend Collectors. Okay. Oh. So likewise, if you have set up these, the, the, the things that you always can look at. So let's set up the screener. Okay. So what I will do right here for Dividend, I will just purely look at Dividend. Okay. So I'll, I'll in a lot lesser uh, so-called um, screener criteria. So I'll just open up WP Rating. Mm -hmm. Financial health, mm. dividend of course, yes. Debt to equity, yes. And dividend yield, ah, right. Here, uh, I will make an assumption that ah, I already got uh, a sum of money. I want to deploy. I want to deploy the money like in maybe uh three to six month time. Mm -hmm. I like to look at a companies that already inside uh so called my valuation already. Okay. So I will look. Uh, I will put a lot more emphasis into dividend yield. Okay. Yeah, look, put, put on, because I want to deploy soon. If you you didn't like, uh, let's say if if you were not uh in urge to deploy uh the funds into uh the company, you like to be more uh flexible. Then maybe dividend you you don't need to look into it yet. All right. Uh, but me, let's say I for example um I have a monthly cash flow. Yeah. I like to deploy it like every three months, six months, something. Kind of mm -hmm. I like to look at companies that already fall into the radar. Mm. Mm, okay, so I'll set up as this criteria. I repeat: WP rating, financial health, dividends, debt to equity, and dividend yield. Okay. Right? Okay. What do we get? No, no, no. You have to set up the screener first. <laughs> <laughs> you have to set up first. Okay. Same thing. I will always want my WP rating. Uh, two star and above. Okay. Uh, here, financial health, uh, uh, dividend giving company, financial health is very important because if the company is not healthy, you couldn't expect the dividend coming in like yeah. the, in, ne in the next few years. Okay, so the dividend companies you have to have high financial health. Yes, and then of course now we are looking at dividend We like to have the consistent uh, uh dividends. Yes. so you like to have a four and above. So this dividend will track the consistency of the company giving up dividends. Mm -hmm. Alright, not so much, I mean the dividend is not so much about you, mm. it's about the consistency. Okay, yes. uh, this is very important whereby if my, uh, my life is depends on cash flow from dividends, this is the things that I would always look up for. Mm. If my life, I mean if my, I imagine if let's say I retire, my retirement life is depend on this cash flow, I uh, definitely want them to consistently give me that. Yeah. Okay. And for dividend giving out cash flow, I don't want them to involve themselves into high debt. Yeah. So my Should max not. cap is right now is at zero point five. Yeah. I don't want them to pay the bank, but not paying me. All right. <laughs> so I don't want them to invest into more debt. Yes. You can involve a bit debt, but not more than zero point five. Okay? okay. Because I want the payment to me, not to the bank. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. And then last thing is, I would like to have this company dividend yield is at least five percent. Yeah, five percent I will consider. But if it's more, then it's definitely better. Okay, so here we start screening. So here, according to our countries or according to your available uh, screeners, then oh. you can find out uh numbers of companies. Uh. So okay. uh, for Australia, there's quite a bit for dividend paying company. Mm -hmm. Singapore, there's quite a few. Uh, Isaac Healthcare that's do. Uh, I think it's. I care la. I said it's I care. Okay. So in Malaysia you have like Hai O is the, the Chinese herb company. Okay. Hub Sing, the uh biscuits company. Oh. Yeah, this is the for Malaysia New York Stock Exchange. Uh this is what Apple Hospitality Reads. Actually I also find out just recently. I haven't studied into it. I don't know what do they have any I don't think they have any re relation with Apple. Apple. <laughs> yeah. And then uh there's quite a few other US companies. But do take note that US company your dividend will be taxed. Yeah. Yeah. So uh you have to be aware of it. Yeah. And then uh some of the Hong Kong company right here, uh computer and the uh, Compute Time Group, I don't know, is it the watch company? Uh, but I don't know. Uh. Okay, you can just look more into it. Mm. Fairwood Holding. Ah, uh, Fairwood Holding I think is the restaurant chain. Oh. The Da Kwai Bo, uh Dai Fai Wu. Okay. So for those who go Hong Kong, uh this is something like uh they, that's quite, they, you know the 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 Hong Kong Hong Kong breakfast is a bit different. They eat macaroni for breakfast one, in soup. <laughs> so this is some of the 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 lifestyle or their breakfast uh, in Hong Kong. Yeah. Uh, 
whereby you can go do scatterbot <laughs> if you like to you can just go experience uh, oh. which is I, I find interesting okay uh, Fairwood is one of the companies that do that kind of foods and uh, a lot lah. so you have Hong Kong I don't think Hong Kong tax uh, dividends um, it, 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 like in Singapore lah, they don't tax uh, investment return one because they want money going to the country mm. yeah and then Singapore one you have like Fortune, Real Estates, uh, Maple Tree Industrial, uh, Micro Mechanics. So, so these are screeners that could help you screen a company faster. Uh, likewise, uh, if you like to deploy, uh, you can look at the you whether I mean first look at the business model first like, Important. If the business model is all right, the dividend are con- con- consistent, then uh, you are okay with the you. Then you may start deploy your capital into uh, this dividend collector company. Okay. All right. So how is it? From Bushra Hathaway, that share by Mingan. Hey, please give Mingan a round of applause. <laughs> thank you. Th- and really thank Mingan from, uh, for really taking out uh, your time to really yeah, share sure. with all Wellpark um, users. For Wellpark users, if you like to have this uh, more often or not more often, like you like to have this like every month, uh, you can share it with uh, all the Wellpark uh, users. Because actually I'm expecting like 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 people. But right now I'm just with 20 people. Uh, okay. you share with me uh, do you like it if you like it what do you like about and what, what do you want me to do okay share with me uh, do you like it what do you like about and then what do you want me to do for the next Wild Park show maybe I repeat again do you like it I hope you say like okay do you like it what do you like about and what do you want to see in the next show yeah alright uh, and uh, also please give good words for Mingan because he has been sharing a lot of uh, good investment knowledge that uh, really I think it's true experience yeah, true, true experience. experience and uh, uh, the time 10 years whereby previously he cannot save time through uh, using well part it's all excel right now yeah. I think with well part definitely the time is, is hit like. with well part you can invest smarter faster easier yes do you think so yes definitely okay help you save time yeah so, so <laughs> yeah so yeah. make sure uh, to help Eric and also to help the whole community just kindly just put We'll go in the comments below, let us know, let the whole team know so that we can plan out the next talk show and look forward to receiving all your comments and uh, yeah. Okay, I a bit long with it, I repeat. So, do you like the show? What do you like about? And what do you want to see in the next video? Yes. So, alright, I think, I think this is the end of the video. Yeah. So, with your part, you can invest. Smarter, Smarter, faster, faster, easier. easier. Bye-bye. See you in the next uh, week. uh, No, next month. Bye-bye. Yeah.